Special guest with us right now. We are, after all, in the White House, so let's bring in the White House Budget Director. His name is Mick Mulvaney, no stranger to this show. He's also the Acting Director of the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau. Have I got it right, Mick? Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection. I We're trying. I'm not going to give up on that. I am going to try and change I, the I'm name. just reading the prompter, so I saw them do it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. How are you doing this morning? It's good to see you. I'm in good shape. Welcome to our fabulous building. Isn't this, isn't this a, a grand piece of architecture? Don't try to change the subject. No, I'm not. I'm just yeah. trying to have a conversation. I'm going to stick it right to what you. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about getting rid of a spending program. You okay. can't do it. It's very difficult. With, it's impossible. Mm -hmm. Once you've got a government program, you can't get rid of it. And yeah. we surely need to get rid of some spending now because we're at a rising deficit with a 4% growth economy. How do you cut spending? You can't. It's very difficult, and here's why. Uh, because of the rules of the Senate, which, uh, allow, which require 60 votes for every single uh, spending bill in the Senate, by definition, unless one party has 60 votes, which very rarely happens, every spending bill must be bipartisan. And the way you buy bipartisanship in this town is to borrow more money. So even if the Republicans, every single one of them, wanted to cut spending, they have to get eight or ten Democrats to go along. You cannot convince a Democrat to cut spending, so you end up spending more money. So we've got a mess here. You do. There's no question you're about it. You're rising deficit when you've got a 4% growth economy. There really, there's no, you're, you're telling me, essentially... You can't do much about it. You can't. Well, keep in mind, there's a very interesting thing happening. We're going through budget season right now, and I happen to run an agency uh, across the street at the Bureau, in addition to my work here at the Office of Management Budget, and we're setting our budget there right now. We will actually spend less money next year at the Bureau than we did this year. There's, I think, right now about three agencies get, that can say that. The one thing they have in common is not a single one of them is appropriated by Congress. So when you've given the Trump administration the ability to actually run our budgets, we spend less. When Senate Democrats are involved in the process, we spend more, and we have to figure out a way to change that because the deficits are getting to be a problem. Here's another problem, rising interest rates. Anybody who's borrowed money, whether it's a mortgage or a car loan, they're paying a little bit more. A mortgage, monthly mortgage payments are going up significantly. That's another problem for the economy. But there's nothing, again, there's nothing you can do about that. And again, interest rates are still at historically low levels, but you're absolutely right. And no one borrows more money than we do at the federal government, which means that no one is more impacted by rising interest rates than we are. Um, every 100 basis points in our lending costs costs us about $160 billion. That's a big, big number. In fact, this year, uh, I think we will only spend more on defense than we will on interest payments. Now, you can put Medicare and Social Security aside, but in the discretionary part of the budget, the stuff we actually budget for every single year, our second largest line item right now is, is uh, interest. And there's nothing you can do about it. We could spend less, and you could convince the Democrats that this is a less. problem, but it's, it's, it's you're, difficult. You're a freedom caucus guy. I, 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 in, in my house. heart, I still am. Um, but I'm now just you're in charge of spending $4 trillion, and you can't cut the spending. Uh, again, Congress spends the money. Uh, that's the way the Constitution is set up. We can send budgets up, and we have, that save less, that spend less money, that save money, that lower the deficit, and Congress, mostly Senate Democrats, throw it in the trash. Are you still enjoying the job? Having a blast, having a great time. Get a chance to talk about deregulation today uh, at the Cabinet meeting. Get a chance to talk about budgets at the Cabinet meeting. This is uh, right in my wheelhouse. It's going to be a fun week at work. I just came across this astonishing number. Outstanding student loans, student debt. $1.53 trillion. Yeah. What do you, I mean... The pressure to discount some of that, forgive some of those loans, that's going to be intense. Would you, would you be in favor of that? Well, what, it, it does hurt the economy. What, what did we expect when we, when we took the lending of money out of the private sector and moved it into the public sector? Who, who's the largest originator of student loans now? The federal government. Right. If a bank makes a loan to you, they really care about getting paid back. If the government makes a loan to you, eh, maybe they do, maybe they don't. And it's not surprising that we've seen student loans skyrocket because the government now makes those loans. Debt. I mean, there's, there's millions of youngsters out there. Well, we'd like folks to repay a thousand dollar debt around there. We'd like folks to repay their debt. We're doing, I think, a good job now of educating people. One of the things we do at the Bureau of Consumer Financial Protection that doesn't get that much attention is that we, we are charged with educating consumers. We're trying very hard to educate young people, especially because this, for a lot of them, is the first major debt they take out. It's like, look, if you're going to borrow this much money, make sure you're using it to get an education that can get you a job that helps you pay it back. Is loan forgiveness part of your? It's, in, uh, you know, it's, not, it's not part of our budget. We would like no. people to repay their debts. We think that's a fair thing to do. Space it. Um, if you're borrowing money right now to go to school, you're borrowing from the other taxpayers. Um, and if you ask for loan forgiveness, what that really means is you want other taxpayers to give you money to go to school, and uh, that's not part of our program. This is red tape cutting day here at the White House. It's a good day for us, yes. T name one regulation that you intend to cut in the very near future. Oh, we, we, I think we've got 176 that we cut one. last year. This year, one the, in the, future. the three big ones we're working on this year, and you'll, you'll recognize all of them. 
waters of the U.S., this rule that says that a roadside ditch is a navigable stream and thus regulatable by the federal government. Number two, CAFE standards for cars, which we think is going to add almost a quarter of a trillion dollars of cost to American consumers. Uh, and the last one is the clean coal, uh, clean power plant uh, rule that we're working on. Those are the three big ones we're working on now that we hope to get out in the next 12, mo 12 months. Mick Mulvaney, you're still having a good time, which I find astonishing, actually. <laughs> it's very in mind your job. You have to be a really strange person to like this job, and I love it, which means I must be really strange. Oh, welcome to the show. Mick Mulvaney, thanks very much for being with us. Thanks, we appreciate it. Thank you.